who's talking about you know, this particular country and you're not talking about that particular country. My choice of a country to talk about is not my preference of country. It is based on what country is violating basic human rights. That's Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar taking aim at Israel once again as she fundraises for the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, the political action committee with ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. Here to weigh in, Israeli ambassador to the UN, Danny Danan joins us now. Danny, thank you so much for being here this morning. So you, we've heard what she said in the past. She continues to, to talk about and allude to uh, her distrust of Israel. Your take on Ilhan Omar this morning. Good morning, Pete. It is Good unfortunate. Morning. It is not uh, the first time that uh, we hear Congresswoman Omar criticizing Israel, but in a particular way, she's uh, speaking about anti-Semitism, about dual loyalty of the Jewish population here in the United States. We have no problem with criticism, but the way it is being done, it is pure anti-Semitism, and we have seen we have seen it in the UK. Now we see it here in the US. And my message this morning is very clear. We need to denounce anti-Semitism, isolate, and remove those leaders who promote anti-Semitism. It is but, unacceptable. But Danny, have the Democrats denounced anti-Semitism? First of all, they watered down the, the, the resolution in the House. And now we see nine Democrats running for president in 2020, skipping the APAC conference that you're a part of. We're going to put a list up of some of those candidates. And they've move on.org, a far left group, which feels like it's become the, the center of the Democrat Party, calling for them not to attend APAC. And they're not going. So is the, are Democrats sufficiently denouncing anti-Semitism? Well, first of all, for Israel, the bipartisan support is very important, and we appreciate it. Here in D.C., we're going to have speakers from both parties because we have common values with the U.S., and it will continue to be the case. But yes, I agree with you, we should hear a strong condemnation. I face the same situation in the U.N. When we want to pass a resolution condemning anti-Semitism, always you will hear people say, well, it's not only anti-Semitism, and they're trying to dilute the resolution. Let's look at the numbers, Pete. In the United States in 2017, according to the FBI, most of the hate crimes were against the Jews. So we should be very clear about it. We should not dilute the message. We should have a clear condemnation only against anti-Semitism. Danny, what is the rationale behind creeping anti-Semitism? Why does the tendency become to push back against the Jews? Well, unfortunately, there's nothing new here. For thousands of years, we see it that the people blame the Jews for everything, and every few hundred years, it's coming up again, and that's what we are facing today. We should not ignore it. We saw what happened in Europe. We should not ignore it here in the U.S. We should be very strong about it, and we should push away those people, especially those leaders who are trying to bring anti-Semitism back to our table.